took me about like all day to make this tutorial. Hey everybody, welcome to part 3 of how to make your own space shooter game with Swift and Xcode. This time we're going to be dealing with saving high scores and scores, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is open up our Galago1.xcode project, so let's make this a bit bigger, and head over to our nscene.sks. Now I actually did this wrong, we don't actually want an nscene.sks, we want an nscene.swift file, and this will actually control a, a view controller. So we just need to right click, or I mean just right click on the nscene, and click delete. And we're going to move this to trash, and we're going to say file, new, file, Go to the source up here for iOS, and we're going to add a Swift file. And this Swift file, we'll just call this end scene. Create. And now we can make this a bit, we can just move this down here. And now we have our end scene and our game scene. Now first we want to edit our game scene so that it actually moves over to our end scene. And actually, actually head over to your end scene first. So in, inside of our end scene, we want to import and this will be our sprite kit, and this will allow us to use certain ele elements for our sprite kit game that we are doing, and we just need to say class, and this is going to be the name of our scene, so we're gonna call this end scene, and then we of the super class of an SK scene. And again, this is also contained inside of the import that we just did with sprite kit. So, Class end scene, SK scene, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and inside of these we want to say did move to view. And inside of the did move to view, we're just going to add an NS log in there for now just to make sure that we are moving over to the scene. Let's head over to our game scene.swift, and inside of our collision with enemy, I mean our collision with person right down here, we would instead of it saying self.view.present scene sk scene file named we want to actually just say present scene and delete everything inside of there and inside of present scene we just want to say end scene like so so we are actually just presenting the sk scene that we just created right here you just want to make sure it's the exact same name as the class over there so we can just build and run this right now and once we hit our enemy we are going to get I mean, yeah, once we hit our player against our enemy, we're going to move to the other scene. That is exactly what we want. So let's head over to our game, our end scene.swift. And inside of our end scene.swift, we're going to change the background color. So we can say scene.background color equals UI color dot, and we'll just make this a white color. So when the game ends, we want a white color. Next thing we need is a restart button, so we can just say var, and actually we want to create this right outside of our did move to view. So we can say var, and this will be restart btn for button, and this is going to be equal to, so let's just say colon ui button, exclamation point, and this will instantiate that this is a button. Now inside of our did move to view, we want to say restart button equals ui button, and this is going to give it the frame of a CG rect. So we can type in there CG rect, open parentheses. Our X value we will set later, and our Y value we will also set later. So I'm just going to set those to zero. Our width, I am just going to put this as 200. And our height, we're going to make it 30. If you want to programmatically do this, we can actually do this. This is probably the better way to do it. We can say view.frame.size divided by, and we'll divide it by three, size.width. Size.width divided by three will be our width of our restart button. And the height of it, we're just gonna, let's leave it at 30. I think that's perfectly fine. Let's go down here and we're gonna say restart button dot set title. So we're gonna set the title to just say restart. And this is going to be for the state UI control state dot normal and basically all this means is when it's just sitting there doing nothing when you're not pressing the button or anything nothing's happening uh, we will just have the text set to restart now let's go down here and we want to say restart button dot set title color we're gonna set the color to a UI color dot dark gray color and this is going to be again for the control state UI control state state dot normal. 
Now go down here and we want to add a target. So basically this is going to wanting, we're wanting to call some functions off of this. So we can say restart button dot add target. And the target will be self. Our action will be a selector. So just type in selector with capital S, open parentheses, close parentheses, for control state UI, contr or actually U for control events. This is going to be UI control events, events dot touch up inside. So once the button is released after you touch up inside of it, we are going to call a function. And we're just going to call the function, and we're going to build it right down here. This will be a function called restart. And then after that, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Now let's head on up here to our restart button.add target. And inside of the selector, we just actually want to say open pro quotation mark, close quotation mark. And inside of these, you just want to type in restart or the name of the function that you just created. Also, it is capitalized. If it's capitalized, you want to capitalize it inside of those quotation marks as well. And now lastly, for now, we need to say self.view.add subview. And this was going to allow us to add the restart button into our view. So just type in restart button and we can build and run this right now. And now we should have our restart button placed inside of there. So we can just crash into there and we have a restart button right up there. So now another thing we need to do is set our restart button into a specific place. So we can say restart button dot center will be equal to CG point. And the CG point is going to be an X value so you can say CG point open for an X value of frame dot size dot width divided by two. So we're going to set this right in the center of our scene. Then we also want to say frame. Oh, again, this should be view view dot frame dot size dot width. And then over here in our Y value, we just want this to be let's just say view dot frame dot size dot width. And this will be divided by seven. So it's going to barely be going down. And we can build and run this right now just to see where our center is. And we can adjust likewise. So let's go ahead, crash in there. That looks like a good place. We have restart. We, and we click on restart. Nothing happens because we didn't put a anything into our function for restart. So we can automatically just do this by just saying self.view.present scene. And we're going to present the scene that we had before. This is going to be our game scene with the transition. And this is just going to be an SK transition uh, dot crossfade with duration. Let's set that to one second. Although we will change that in just a second, I'm just going to show you that one second is actually wrong later on. We will change it later to 0 0.3. So if you want to, you can change it to 0 0.3 right now. But 1.0 seconds actually creates an error later on. And then we also want to delete our uh, restart button as soon as we change this. So we can say restart button dot remove from super view. So now if we built and ran this right now, we should see that our, pre our present scene brings up our game scene that we had before. And when we collide with it, we will have our scene come up, we click restart, and it goes back to our original place. Now, as you can see, I got this error, and it says fatal error, unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. Now, basically, the way I see it right now is there's two enemies being built at the same time, and that is because of that longer duration. So as these enemies are being built at the same time, we are also getting one of these is just nil, basically. It might look like a enemy, but it's not really an enemy. That might not be the problem. I don't exactly know what is the problem, but either way, I figured the, out the way to fix this is just go back and go back to your end scene dot swift and say crossfade with duration. And we're going to just change this down to 0 0.3. So now if we were to build and run this right now, we should see that we're getting a faster crossfade for one as we restart. We're getting a faster crossfade, but also we're not getting that error. And I can do this many times and we're never going to get that error as far as I've tried it. And now also you can see that our our background, I, I just switched to back actually, but our background is, is this ugly gray color. So we actually want to change this and we're going to make it a nice dark gray color. And then we're going to add some stars. So we can say self.scene.pixel. 
background color will be equal to a UI color dot dark gray color. So now if we were to build and run this, we should see a dark gray color being built into the background of our scene, as you can see. And then it goes over to restart and whatnot. We can head up here to our file and we're going to create a new file, new file. And this is going to be an, a resource and this will be a sprite kit particle file. Click next and I'm just actually going to make this snow. You can make this whatever you want it to be really. Actually, I'm going to make this magic. Why not magic? Because I think it's going to look cool. So in our, we're going to save this as just a magic particle system. So we'll save magic particle. We can put that in there, and this is what magic looks like. Of course, you can go through all the options, such as fire and other things like that. But basically, this is going to be our background. So we can edit the background as much as you want. You can change the particle birth rate to quite low. I think I like this a bit better to just have it as a nice little background. We can make the lifetime of each of these just a lot smaller, so they're more twinkling stars. So let's do that just by doing that. And then we can also change the scale, so it's going to start at a fairly small scale. So we can start it at zero, and it's going to go to a range of pretty big. Like there. We can change the speed. Of course you can edit this to your heart's delight, but let's go over back to our game scene.swift, and now we're going to add this particle system onto our scene. So this is pretty simple. We can just say self.addChild, and we can add this child, which is an SK emitter node. Open parentheses, our file named, and of course our file name is magic particle and also make sure everything is capitalized the way you want it or else it will not build properly and if we were to build and run this we will see that actually we need to edit some of the sizes so as you can see we build and run and you'll see it's right in here in the corner which is not it what we want so let's go back to our game scene i mean our magic particle dot sks and we're gonna say the position range will range from uh, we'll make this pretty wide. Our x value will be 1280, as that's just double of 640. And our y value will be uh, just about 2200. You can make that whatever you want, but it's just making it a lot bigger. Now you can also, because the because everything is a bit smaller now, we can also increase the birth rate a bit more so we get all these particles onto our scene. And we can build and run this. And as you can see, we have a twinkling particle background in the background. So that is how you would add a particle system onto your scene as well. Of course, you can always add an image just by creating a UI image and putting it in there. I'm not going to do that. I like this particle system look. So now if we were to go back to our game scene, another thing we want to do is have a high score. So in order to do this, we would just take our score and we can we want to pass it over to our next scene. So go down here to your collision with person. We're going to create an NS user default. So say var, and this will be called our score. Will be equal to NS user defaults dot standard user defaults. Then we can say score dot set value. Set value. And our value will be our, the same as our score that we have. So we can just put that integer right in there. And this can actually be whatever you want it to be. But basically, this is going to be placed into some core data. And then you want to grab from the core by using this specific name that you give it. So you can say score.setValue, score for key, and we'll just call this score. So we're going to grab this score from the NS user defaults later on. So now next thing we want to do is actually take this number up here and we want to save it. And if it's larger than a certain number or the high score, then we want to save it as the high score. So in order for us to do this, we can go to our game scene.swift and inside of our game scene.swift, we want to go down here with our collision with person. Now we want to, inside of our collision with person, we just say var, uh, this will be our score. Then this will be actually be called score default can call it that is equal to ns user defaults ns user defaults dot standard user defaults and then we're going to set the score default so score default dot set value 
and the value will be set to a score. So we're passing the, this score along inside of our core data with the key name of score. Now let's go over to our end scene. And inside of our end scene, we want to go into our did move to view. And inside of this, we just want to say var score default will be equal to will be equal to ns user defaults dot standard user defaults and then say var and this will be our score will be equal to score default dot value for key open parentheses close parentheses and this is going to be the name of the key that you gave it back in your game scene dot swift be sure it's capitalized the same in everything or else it will not work properly. Then we want to say as an ns integer. So now if we were to build and run this right now, or actually, first of all, we want to see that the score is actually being put in properly. So we just need to say ns log, open parentheses, close parentheses. And inside of this, you just want to say open quotation mark, open quotation mark, close quotation mark, slash, open parentheses, close parentheses. And inside of these parentheses, you just want to say score. And this is going to allow us to see what exactly the score is. I typed an ns log a bit wrong. Now let's build and run. And we should see that we have our ns log score being built properly. And if we crash into one of these guys, we don't get that. We don't get it working properly. Of course we don't. Now I'm actually getting this error because I did something wrong. We need to go over here to our score default and just click and drag this right above the, all the rest of our text, we could just copy. And we're gonna paste this right before we say self.view.present scene. That is what was wrong because we're moving to the other scene before we can save anything. So we can build and run this right now. And if we were to hit our person, we would actually see that our score was one. So there you have it, uh, we're grabbing and we're putting this score as the score. So now we wanna take this score and save a high score. So in order for us to do this, let's go over to our game scene.swift. And first of all, we're gonna create a variable and this variable will be our high score. And this will be equal to an integer. And then we need to go down here into our did move to view and do exactly what we did with our score and create an NS user default. So we can say var and this will be our high score default. Default will be equal to, uh, will be equal to NS user defaults dot standard user defaults. And then down here, we need to go down here and say if our high score default dot value for key, and we haven't created this key yet, but we're going to make sure that this key is empty. So if the high score default dot value for key high score is not equal to nil, meaning that there is something inside of it. So if there's not equal to nil, then we want to set our high score equal to our high score default dot value for key. High score default dot value for key. And again, this will be our high score. And it's gonna give you this little error. So we need to say as an NS integer. So we are basically saying this is an integer and we're making sure that it knows that the high score is an integer. And if this is false, we just want to set our high score equal to zero. So we can just say high score equals zero. Because of course, if there's nothing inside of our NS user defaults, that means we haven't played the game before. So we're automatically going to set our high score equal to zero. And then down here in our collision with person, we need to say if the score is greater than, is greater than our high score, then we want to run a function. So if it's greater than the high score, then we want to say var high score default, as you need to call the high score default every time you want to use it. So say var high score default is equal to ns user ns user defaults dot standard user defaults. Then we're going to say high score default dot set value. We're going to set the value high score for key, and this is again, oh, sorry, we're gonna set this val set the value of score for key, and this is going to be our open quotation mark, close quotation mark, high score. And then we need to head over to our end scene dot swift and just call this high score exactly as we did before. So go over to your end, your game scene. We're gonna just copy and paste this right here. 
and for go to our game scene dot I mean our end scene dot swift go down here and we're gonna create another variable and we're gonna create this variable high score right up here and this is going to be equal to an integer and then down here in your var high score default we need to set our integer to equal to our high score default dot value for key so we can say high score is equal to our high score default dot high score default dot value for key. I think this is going to be our high score key. And again, make sure it's capitalized the way you the way it was, or else you're gonna get this wrong. And again, this should be as an NS integer. Integer. Then go down here, we're gonna NS log our high score that we just created. NS log. And inside of these parentheses, you just want to go slash, open parentheses, close parentheses, and type in high score. So we're going to call this integer and make sure what we have the integer that we want. So go down here, we can build and run, and let's crash into our enemy, and we should see that our high score is equal to 4. So there is our high score. It was stored up from a previous game that we did before. So now if I were to actually beat this score bef that we had before, let's say 5, crash into an enemy, or I guess I had 6. So there we have it. Boom. Our score is equal to 6, and our high score is equal to 6. And now we also want to create some labels to go along with this. So we can say var score label will be equal to UI label. UI label, open parentheses, and this is going to be with the frame of a CG rect. And we're just going to basically make it the same frame as what we had up here. And we're going to set the center, and then we want to set the center of the score label, so just a score label dot center will be equal to, and this will be equal to an XY value, so it's just a CG point open parentheses, and basically we're going to take the exact same x and y values that we had up here, so we can just put those right in there. We're going to paste that right in there. And inside of this we have our x value as view.frame.size.width divided by 2, so it's going to be right in the center, and view.frame.size.width divided by, and we're going to change this to 4, so it's a little bit down below. And then now we're going to take this, and we're going to also have a high score label, so we can say uh, var high score label and we're basically going to take the exact same thing so we can actually just copy and paste these two lines put those right down there this will be our high score high score label again high score label dot center and this time we're going to make this divided by two at the end so we can see it a bit better and then we also want to set the text of these labels so we can say score label dot text will be equal to open quotation mark, close quotation mark, slash that. We're going to type in score, and then we're also going to do the same down here. So we're going to say high score dot text. I mean high score label dot text. I don't think I'm typing this in right. High score label dot text equal to, and this again, open quotation mark, close quotation mark, and inside of here, we're just going to put high score. So now we have all those built in there, and then we need to say self dot view dot add sub view. So we're going to add the label into our view, and we're going to add the score label. Go down here, we're going to do the exact same thing, except with our high score label. So say self dot view dot add sub view, and again, this is going to be for our high score label. Now if we were to build and run this, we should get all of our high scores, our scores, our labels, all building and running inside of our ending scene. So now let's hit, and there you have it. There is our score of, for that one and our high score. Now again, you can play around with the numbers and make sure that you're getting the correct uh, positioning for everything. But So as you can see, the 1 and the 6 were actually carried over to our main view controller. So in order to fix this, let's head over to our end scene.swift. And we're just going to take this score label and make it public. So we're going to say var score label. And we're going to erase the variable right over here. So we're going to just make this score label and high score label. And then up here where it says restart button and all this, we need to do this right outside of our override func did move to view. 
and say var score label, and this will be equal to a UI label, and then exclamation point, or actually colon UI label, so this should actually be var score label, colon UI label, exclamation point, and then again var high score label, colon UI label, exclamation point. And this is just going to allow it to be public, and it looks like I named this wrong. It should be high score label with a capital S. So now that made it public, and now we can go down to our restart, and we can say high score label dot remove uh, from super view, and also a score label dot remove from super view. So now, as you can see, I click the restart button, and everything disappears, and I have my score up here. And then I hit the my player one six restart, and I can also reset the high score. Hit my enemy, and boom, eight is my score, and now eight is my high score. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. If you want to know more about me, be sure to check out the social links down in the description down below. This is the last tutorial of this tutorial series, of the Space Shooters tutorial series. So if you have any co more comments or questions, you can leave that down in the description down below. And I might make another tutorial, but as for now, this is the end. Anyway, I thought this would be good enough as you guys can take your own creative ability and do your own thing with this tutorial. But other than that, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.